How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? I'm Regis Toomey, and welcome to another performance at the Playhouse. Our play is called The Ledge, and in it I have the role of Ed Bartlett, Detective Lieutenant. The star of this performance is Mr. Skip Holmeyer. Ordinarily, Mr. Holmeyer would be here himself to introduce our play, but in the role of Dick Newton, an aspiring young artist, something strange and unusual is going to happen to him, and it's going to happen fast. In fact, it's happening right now just inside that door. Yes, this is Dick. You might know him, or someone like him. In a big town like this, there must be thousands of them. Young men on their way to the top in the big city. Fresh, eager, ready to lick their weight in wildcats. They hop a plane, or a train, or a bus, or hitchhike to hit the big town, knock it on its ear. Yes, there must be thousands of them, only Dick is different, quite different. And the time now is 8.22. It's a beautiful day, friends. Yes, sir, a humdinger top-notcher of a day. No rubbers today, good people, no siree. You can leave that old umbrella at home, too. Why, that old sky's so clear you can see for miles. Yes, sir. But say... this there must be thousands of them, young men on their way to the top in the big city. Only Dick is different, quite different. Tell your elevator boy not to let any people up on this floor. Let people up here? Do you think I'm crazy? Do you think this is good for the hotel? Let people up Wait here. Wait a minute. Take them with you. All right. Just don't forget who tipped you, that's all. Squad room, please. Hello, this is Patrolman Ryan, 27th, Shield 3465. I'm in apartment 16C of the Underwood Tower, intersection 12th and Grand. I got a diver.
Yes, sir. His last name is Newton. N-E-W-T-O-N. First name Richard. No middle initial. Lieutenant Bartlett wants a phone check on a clothing store. The name is the Sport Mart. S-P-O-R-T-M-A-R-T. Right. Ann Arbor, Michigan. Right. Now, no dress. We've got a date in the label. March 3rd. I repeat, 3-1950. Repeat, 1950. Listen, will you tell the lieutenant to talk to Mr. Olson? He's going nuts. Who's Olson? Who's Olson? He's the owner of this place, that's all. He's blowing his top. What's he worried about? He's not out there. Worried about? Did you see the lobby? Have you seen the streets outside? I've been busy. Squat cars, fire engines. Now they're roping off the whole block. Relax, will you? He hasn't jumped yet. You will get him in the ropes or nets or something. He will come in, won't he? He won't actually jump. Who knows? Crazy, you know, it's just crazy. So they say. Hmm? Nobody in their right mind would take a dive. It doesn't solve anything. Did you find out anything? Tell me when you're ready to lower, Jimmy. Be careful, they look up sure. What's going on? We'll try to come up from below. The crew all set in the 14th. Donaldson, can you hear me? Come in if you got me. Come in. Donaldson, can you hear me? Come in if you got me. Get hold of the drugstore to fill this, will you, Ralph? Give him this number, see if it's a local doc. If it is, call him. Is there a driver downstairs? Yes, it's squad nine. All right, if you locate the doctor, send a car for him. Yes, Lieutenant. Not now. What? Did you get that registration card he signed? They're looking for it in the office now. Get me the card. If he gets any mail this morning, I want that too. Lieutenant. How's it going, Ken? Well, don't count on the net or the platform. Oh, ledge. Huh? And a three-foot overhang. That's great. Who's got the street? Miller, he's got it pretty well roped off. Has he moved yet? No, not a muscle. Still staring straight ahead. Well, I guess there's no time like now to let him know he's got an audience. Well, there's a column sticks out between you and him. Can you see around it? No, I don't think so. No chance of grabbing him either. Great. Ralph's trying to get hold of a doc. His name was on the bottle I found in the medicine chest. A local doc? The building man thinks the kid's from out of town. Well, this is a local drugstore. The prescription's only filled a week ago. May mean nothing, though. Medicine looked like eye drops. Uh -huh. Well, I'll help Ralph. There's uh, nothing more I can do with the ropes. Yeah, give me a sign if you locate the doc. Yeah, right. Dick. Hello, Dick. Okay, Dick. Who are you? You ought to be able to guess that. A policeman. That's right. I saw all the cars down there. It feels funny when I look down. Don't then. Don't? Don't look down. I can't see you. The column sticks out too far. I can't see you very well either, Dick. Sorry for all the trouble. Are you? Why don't you come in then? You're only a few feet from the window, Dick. You can step right back in. Nobody's going to be sore at you, kid. Come on in and we'll forget all about it. You might as well talk to me, kid. There isn't much else we can do. Funny. Funny? My shoe, my right shoe. What about your right shoe? Nothing. Funny, that's all. It's untied. Oh. Cigarette, Dick? Go ahead, take it. Your voice, I know you. You ought to, it's Dr. Burns. They sent for you? That's right. My name was on your prescription. Shouldn't bother you, that's crazy. You're my patient. Doctor, please go away. In a moment, if you want me to. How are your eyes, Dick? You know. 
I know they're going to get better in time. You told me. Didn't you believe me, son? This isn't the first time someone's become discouraged, you know. That is the trouble, isn't it, to your eyes? They're not getting better, don't you understand? They're getting worse. Worse. I told you that, you know. You said... I said they'd grow weaker, Dick. Remember? Even before the operation, I said they'd grow weaker. But I also said that after a time, they'd grow strong again. I said that, Dick. After a time. A long time. Doctor. Yes? Don't treat me like a child. Not now, not anymore. You're not a child. Day by day, hour by hour, I tell you, I know. They're my eyes. I know. You know you're wrong, son. Your vision will come back. You will see, Dick. I promise you, you'll be able to paint again. Sure. Don't you believe me? Look, I don't blame you. It's just that I know, don't you see? Know what? You have to tell me I'm going to be all right. You tell any patient that. You have to. No, son. Yes. Don't you think I saw them? The people at the hospital, at the clinic, at your office, you tell them all. No. It's funny, at first they don't mean anything. Just people going to see the doctor. Then you begin to think about it. They're not like me, they're going blind. Then one day you wake up. It flashes through your mind fast, just like that, and then you know. You know you've been kidding yourself. You know you are like them. You're going blind too. Dick, I swear you're wrong. You're dead wrong. Am I? Well? I don't know. I wish I did. So do I. We don't have a chance of getting with the net. Any family? Yeah, mother somewhere in Michigan, I think. I have it in my record. I sent for them. Any girl? I wouldn't know. Were you on the level with him just now, Doc, about his eyes? Completely. There's no foundation at all for his fear. I wish he knew that. He does, if he'd think. Nobody's thinking that decides to step out onto a ledge. I know. Panic will grow. You can bet on it. It feeds on itself. Lieutenant. Yes? There's a girl outside. Name's Joan Webster. Friend of his? No, the doc says she wants to see him. Doctor. Yes, Lieutenant. Somebody wants you. Hmm. Why, Joan, what in the world are you Dr. doing? Dr. Burns, I heard about Mr. Newton. I'm sorry. I just had to come. You know him? I wasn't too I worried. I know that... about him. I've typed all his records in the clinic. Yes, I know, but... When I came to work this morning, Miss Fleischer told me what had happened. Well? I know this sounds strange, Dr. Burns, but I can help him. But, Joan, you don't know him. I do know him. I've typed all his records. I can not help him. What is it, Doc? Uh, this is Miss Webster, Lieutenant Bartlett. Detective Lieutenant Bartlett's in charge here. Miss Webster's a volunteer assistant in my clinic. She's familiar with Newton's history. Oh? Let me speak to him, Lieutenant, please. All right. See what you can do. Would you please leave me alone? Who are you? I told you I help out in Dr. Burns' clinic. What's your name? I told you that too, Dick. It's Joan, Joan Webster. Do I know you? No, not really. That is, we've never met. Then why are you here? Why do you keep talking to me? Because I want to help you. Who sent for you, Dr. Burns? Did he? No. I wish he'd leave me alone. How can I think if you all go on talking to me? Why didn't you think before you got out there? I did. Not very clearly, Dick. Listen, don't you start. What did you think, Dick? I want to know very much if you want to tell me. About clouds? And the sun? And the green grass? That little sailboat I used to fool around with? The sky used to look so blue, like, like ink almost. And the water was dark green with little white caps on it a white sail against the sky. I know. You paint, don't you? You think about things like that. You don't see color like that anymore. And people, you know. 
People you haven't even met yet. A girl, maybe, the girl. You think about her face, what it'll be like. Dick. You don't know what it's like when you realize you're not going to see. Can't you understand? You just don't realize. You come up here and you preach to me and you, you fill me full of... Joan? I'm right here, Dick. I want a cigarette. All right, Dick. He wants a cigarette. Joan, there's no reason to... May I have a cigarette, Doctor? I don't smoke. Miss Webster, he doesn't know that you... That I'm blind, Lieutenant? No, I didn't tell him. Yeah, since birth. Doctor. Yes? May I have a cigarette now, please? Well, they're willing to try if you are. Tell them to hold it a minute. Doc, I want to talk to you. Ryan, take over for Doc. Now, Doc, what do you think? You know him better than we do. Let's think about what? Well, I got a crew on the roof. There's not a chance of getting a man down to him, but we could use a rope. A rope? A lasso, you might call it. So would it work? Well, it has. The odds aren't good, though. And if you try and miss? Mm-hmm. He's liable to get rattled and die. Quite probable. Well, Lieutenant? Tell him no. That girl Joan's certainly doing a good job. Yeah, she's letting him smoke again. Well, she's quite a girl. Yes, yeah, she is. Did you tell me she types for you? Well, there's nothing unusual about that. Quite a large number of blind people type. I use a transcriber. That's certainly one for the books. Huh? Oh, a kid out there that thinks he's going blind and isn't. A girl's been blind all her life. Lieutenant. What do you want now? Mr. Olson's down, says He says you better do something about the lobby. And just what does Mr. Olson suggest? For one thing, they've got cameras down there. Newsreel cameras, television cameras. I don't know about... Tell Mr. Olson this is his big chance. Get his picture in the yeah, movie. But, but, but... Tell him I said that. Joan? I'm still here. What was the name of that lake again? Okonomowoc. Funny name. It's a nice lake. In the summer, we had watermelon races. What? Haven't you ever heard of a watermelon race? No. That's the first time I've heard you laugh. Watermelon races are fun. They float, you know. My father used to take the outboard out on the lake before the race and... Okonomowoc Lake. Of course, silly. He'd dump a dozen watermelons into the water and then we kids would go after them. How? In our sailboats. That's what made it a race. The boat that brought back the most watermelons won. Sounds like fun. It was. If there's a good wind, they float all over the lake, clear over to Lindsay's Cove. You, you a good sailor? Well, I don't get seasick, if that's what you mean. I mean, can you handle a boat? I suppose I could. My brother did most of the sailing, though. Joan? Yes? What do you do? I told you, I help out in Dr. Burns' clinic. Then what? I mean after work. Where do you live? In a hotel, like this one, sort of. Only it's just for women. Sounds awful. It is. What else? What do you do after work? On your days off? Oh, lots of things. I listen to music, sit in the park sometimes. Yesterday, I went to the zoo. I was there last week. It's fun. I love to listen to the animals. Listen? Listen to them? Well, sure, don't you? The lion roars and the monkeys talk all the time and... What do you mean? Listen. What? You said listen to the animals instead of see the animals. Did I? I, I mean, I... I know what you mean. No, Dick. I, I don't think you do. Who told you to say it? Dr. Burns? Did he? No, of course not. Do you think I'm stupid? Ease him into it, he said. Get him used to the idea that he's going blind. That isn't true. Lecture number one with a little applied psychology thrown in. You don't see the animals, Dick boy. You listen to them. Everybody knows that. Are you through now? Go away. I asked you if you were through. Yeah, I'm through. All through. All right, then. Now you listen to me. Look, I... Be still. If you don't want to listen, jump then. That's what you came out here for. Don't worry. I will. Well, that's up to you. But I want to tell you something just the same. You are stupid. Do you know that? You're just as dumb as they come. 
Sure, rattle on. For one thing, you won't even believe your own doctor. He tells you you're going to get better, and you haven't got sense enough to believe him. Sense? Or courage. You think climbing out on the ledge takes courage? You are dumb. But... That isn't courage. Courage is believing, knowing that things are going to be all right. Waiting if you have to, waiting forever. But going on believing, that's courage. Would you believe? I do believe. But you're not going blind. Neither are you. Joan? But even if I were, I'd still believe. In what? Do you really want to know? More than anything. I believe you don't see with your eyes, Dick. Blind or full-sighted, it doesn't make any difference. You see with your heart. I... All the things we talked about. The sky you mentioned, the blueness of it. Or the dark green of the water. Or a white sail. Or a white sail. Or someone you love. These are the gifts of God to all of us. Not you with eyes. Not someone else without eyes, but all of us. Because we see with our hearts. Joan. I'm right here, Dick. Joan, I... Joan? Coming in, this is it. Ryan, clear the hall. Get everybody out of there except that girl. Keep her there. Send Doc back. Yes, sir. Now, can you know what to do? Keep back. If he starts coming and give him time. Don't grab him. You're sure you got him. Check only. Uh, only what? What makes you think he's coming in? The girl will bring him in. I'm betting on it. Doc, get in there. Come on. Sit down and rest. No. Look, I'll give you a sedative. It'll help you to calm you down. The, the doctor, the girl. Where is she? Later, son, later. Right now, sit down and rest. I don't want to rest. I want to see Joan. Now, Dick, the doc's right. You need rest more I than anything. I need her. Dick. Dick. Dick, Joan is outside. Later on, if you want to talk to her, I'll see what Can't I... Can't you understand? I've got to talk to her now. Please, doctor, please. Why? Why do you have to talk to her now? I don't know. I heard her talking. I listened to her and... all of a sudden, nothing else seemed to matter. I think it'll be all right, Lieutenant. All right. Only I want you to get something straight. You gave us a rough time this morning. You know that, don't you? I'm sorry. I don't care if you're sorry. You know you're a dope. Taking a dive settles nothing. Do you know that now, Dick? I know. All right. I'm going to take a chance on you, but remember, we're not going to fool around now. I won't either. Okay, go ahead. Joan, wait! Joan! 